Hey guys, this is Sega with Frontline Tactic. Today I am going to be playing one of my favorite RPG settings that the Dungeon Dragons uh, ever came out uh, back in 2nd edition, uh, Planescape Torment. To me, this is the most gothic and dark uh, setting that Dungeon Dragons has ever came out. And, and this is me challenging those that know more of what was it um strahd which is the newer campaigns in ravenloft ravenloft came out around the same time as this which is more of your traditional edgar Allan poe werewolves and vampires rar um this is more about your existential dread and how minuscule you are in the universe and everything so there's a lot of that kind of dread um and so planescape torment setting actually takes place in the multiverse it outside of the multiverse uh and it looks over all the planes of existence and you'll see it's it's an amazing fantastic setting and i hope that one day that they redo it um i picked this up from steam uh steam had this on sale for like a dollar and i had to jump on it so this is the enhanced edition they've remastered it because again this game is like 20 years old <laughs> so let's see how well it has uh, held up and i'm hoping to finish this um hopefully you guys end up liking it and we can do that i never finished it because back in the day my cd was scratched and i was never able to finish it let's start a new game so new life character generation I have so many character points. Here's my armor class and hit points. So this is, I remember it, this is, okay, yeah. So this is second edition. So second edition is gonna be a lot different. There's gonna run off a of Thaco. It's, yeah. So those of you guys that are familiar with say, third edition to fifth edition Dungeons and Dragons, there's gonna be a lot of this that isn't gonna make sense. And this is how those of us that played Advanced Dungeons and Dragons and Second Edition Dungeons and Dragons did things back in the day. So, um, so uh, higher intelligence helps regain memories faster, gives you more dialogue options, and aids in your mage skills. So I'm gonna put some into intellect. I want some into dex, strength. Um, above average plus one. Okay, I want the plus one. Put a couple points in the charisma. Okay, so I got plus one dex, which comes in a huge handy. Um, can't lower constitution anymore. Do I really want. No, I don't want charisma, I want constitution. I'm getting my constitution up. So hopefully those stats, I believe, level up a little bit. And I am the nameless one, because you start the game without your memory. Let's get this going. Hey, Chief. You okay? You playing corpse or you putting the blinds on the dusties? I thought you were a debtor for sure. All right, so here's something else that was really cool about this campaign is that there's a ton of slang and it takes a while to get used to. Let's see if I remember any of this. Playing corpse, playing dead. Uh, you put putting the blinds on the dusties. Putting the blinds, uh, it's kind of like being stealthy, um, fooling them. Uh, dusties, uh, there's a clan or gang in this world called the Dustmen, which believe in the true death. They would practice a sort of necromancy. Um, they thought you were a debtor for sure. So debtor means corpse. What? What? Who are you? Well, who am I? How about you start? Who are you? I asked you first, skull. Cause yeah, M Morte is just a floating skull. I was like, I don't know. I don't remember. You can't remember your name? Huh? 
Well, next time you spend a night in this burg, go easy on the bub. Name's Morte. I'm trapped here too. Trapped? Yeah, since you haven't had time to get your legs yet, here's the chant. I tried all the doors, and this room is locked tighter than a chastity belt. Uh, got your legs yet, so it's kind of like, you know, sea legs, land legs kind of a thing. And chants, like, what's word of mouth, like, what's, what's, what's good? We're locked in here. Where? What is this place? It's called the Mortuary. It's a big black structure with all the architectural charm of a pregnant spider. Uh, those of you guys that don't know, Mortuary is like House of the Dead or... Mortuary. What? Am I dead? Not from where I'm standing. You got scars aplenty, although looks like some burk. Burk is kind of like some jerk or some, some, some punk. Painted you with a knife. All the more reason to give this place the laugh before whoever carved you up comes back to finish the job. Scars? How bad are they? Well, the carvings on your chest aren't too bad, but the ones on your back... Morte pauses. Say, it looks like you got a whole tattoo gallery on your back, Chief. It spells out something. Tattoos on my back? What do they say? Heh, <laughs> looks like you came with directions. Morte clears his throat. <clears> throat> Let's see, it starts with... I know you feel like you've been drinking a few kegs of Styx wash. I think that's referencing the river Styx. But you need to center yourself, and among your possessions is a journal that'll shed some light on the dark of the matter. A rod can fill you in with the rest of the chant. If he's not in the dead book already... A rod? Does it say anything else? Yeah, there's a bit more. More as he pauses. Let's see, it goes on... Don't lose the journal or we'll end up the sticks again. And whatever you do, do not tell anyone who you are or what happens to you. Or you'll be put in a quick pilgrimage to the crematorium. Do what I tell you. Read the journal, then find Farad. No wonder my back hurts. There's a damn novel written there. As for that journal I'm supposed to have with me, was there one with me when I was lying here? No, you were stripped to the skins when you arrived. Here, sides. Looks like you've got enough of a journal panned on your body. What about Farad? Do you know him? Nobody I know, but then again, I don't know many people. Still, some Burke Scots know where to find Farad. Uh, once we get out of here, that is. How do we get out of here? Well, all the doors are locked, so we'll need the key. Chances are one of the walking corpses in the room has it. Walking corpses? This is where the dust dustmen get kind of interesting. Because... In these planes, like, everything... Or in this, like, campaign setting, everything's a currency. Even your corpse. And so this is one of the ways that you can kind of pay debts. That was, like, the interesting part of the setting is... That necromancy was kind of accepted because a body is a commodity and so you can basically pay your your debt by basically signing over your corpse to like the dustman and a couple other of these guilds so then when you died your corpse can be reanimated and fulfill the whatever promise or duties or debts or loan that you took out so that's what like all these zombies are walking around is they're a bunch of debtors that are well debtors debtors yeah <laughs> that's not very funny yeah the mortuary keepers are dead bodies as cheap labor the corpses are dumb as stones but they're harmless and won't attack you unless you attack first there's some other way i don't want to kill them just for a key well, you think it's going to hurt their feelings? They're dead. But if you want a bright side to this, if you kill them, at least they'll have a rest before their keepers raise them to work again. Well, all right. I'll take one of them down to get the key. Our game will give you little side notes and stuff like that. But this, this game plays out just like Baldur's Gate, 
just like Icewind Dale. Um, there's a couple of them, the isometrics, uh, Pillars of Earth, things like that. So if you end up liking this, what you see here, then there's plenty of other games that are just like it. Or if you like those games and you're looking for a very high fantasy gothic feel, come check this one out. It's definitely worth worth it. Search the shelves of the room. Well, before you go, arm yourself. I think there's a scalpel on one of the shelves. One last thing. Some corpses are slow as molasses. But getting punched by one of them is being kissed by a battering ram. If they start getting on edge on you, remember you can run and they can't. Okay, to run, either toggle run in the option screen or hold shift to click. That's right. Combat log. It's been a while since I've played. But I think I got it. I remember right, there we go. That's what I want. Done. What was it? All right, bandages. Oh, that's not what I meant to do. There used to be a key. That's not what I want. Yeah, there used to be a key that if you held, you could see where all the lootables are. A scalpel. Oh. Alright, you found the scalpel. Now get... Go get those corpses and don't worry. I'll stay back and provide valuable tactical advice. Maybe you could help me, Morte. I will be helping you. Good advice is hard to come by. I meant in attacking the corpses. Me? I'm a romantic. Not a soldier. I just, uh, get in the way. When I attack this corpse, you better be right there with me, or I'll next thing you punch you in the scalp. Now nah, we'll just go all right then. Time to introduce yourself to the corpses, to the second death, then. Although you can attack by selecting weapons, there's a toggle switch. Ah, these barrels contain murky fluid that smells like cross between vinegar and formaldehyde. Looks like someone in the middle of the dissecting a corpse. Alright, let's check up with that. Ah, nothing. Ah, let's talk to him. Let's see. The shambling corpse looks like it has been dead for several years. Skin along its forehead has been peeled back, revealing its chalk white skull. Someone has chiseled the number 569 onto the exposed bone. Examine the corpse to see if it's carrying the key. So just like all the other Dungeons and Dragons games out there, sometimes combat isn't always the right answer. That'll get you in hot water. So being investigative, so to speak. This corpse doesn't appear to be carrying a key. It doesn't look like it would be able to use one if it did. Its fingers are broken, as if someone smashed it with a hammer. You do happen to notice that in its left shoulder is heavily bandaged. The bandage might be useful if the corpse was disposed of first. Alright, let's see. I guess you don't have it. You don't happen to know which the corpse friends has. Uh, Chief, they can't hear you. You know that, right? They're dead. But you're dead, and you're talking to me. Yeah, but I'm special. Death couldn't kill my zest for life. These corpses here, Morte rolls his eyes. They probably didn't have much personality to begin with. I see. Look, Chief, watching you try to swap the chant with these corpses isn't going to much uh, for my morale. Let's leave the corpse talks to the Bur Burmese, all right? All right, let's go check this guy out. This corpse lolls back and forth on its shoulders, judging from the angle of its neck that looks like this man has was hanged. That's like the number 825 has been painted on the side of its head. Damn the corpse. The corpse is carrying nothing, but you happen to notice its hands are heavily bandaged. The bandages might be useful if the corpse was disposed of first.
It was great talking to you. Farewell. So this one, if I remember right, has a lot of like secret endings and it's how you interact and how because you can just disregard the corpse and just well you don't have to use any pleasantries with the corpse but there's certain things in this game that if you do and if you believe it enough they can come true or if you do certain things with your character it can change certain things in the game it's really interesting I don't know all the quirks it's been like i said like 20 years since i've played this game but i was into it this corpse stops and stares blankly at you as you approach the number 782 is carved into its forehead and his lips have been stitched closed the faint smell of formaldehyde emanates from its body examine the corpse this corpse looks like the one with the key it is holding it tightly in its left hand its thumb and forefinger locked around it in a death grip it looks like you've need to hack the corpse's hand off to free the key leave the corpse in peace I, I didn't even equip this That's right, there we go. Yeah, pick it up and drop it really fast. EC2. So yeah, in this version of Dungeons & Dragons, the lower your EC number, the better. It's a Thaco system, which is very weird. It takes a while to get used to. So let's talk to him again. Let's examine him. the key preparation room key the head of this bronze key has been twisted around itself several times so it resembles a screw if morte is to be believed it unlocks one of the doors in the preparation room that's right i can pause the game oh that's it all right Door here. Uh, this one's locked. Don't have this key. Let's see. Can't remember. Was there a sneak ability? Nope. Have no spells. All right. All right. Lost the item. No longer have the screw. Ah, oh, what's happening now? Psst. Some advice, Chief. I'd keep quiet from here on. No need to put any more corpses in the dead book than necessary, especially the Fems. Plus, killing them might draw the caretakers here. I don't think you mentioned it before. Who are the caretakers? They call themselves the Dustmen. You can't miss them. They have an obsession with black and rigor mortis on their face. They're an adult bunch of ghoulish death worshippers. They believe everyone should die. Sooner better than later. I'm confused. Why do these Dustmen care if I escape? Weren't you listening? I said the Dusties believe everybody's got to die. Sooner better than later. You think the corpses you've seen are happier in the dead book than out of it? You've said something about making sure I don't kill the corpses. Why? What were you serious? Look, Chief. These dead tits are the last chance for a couple of hardy bashers like us. We need to be chivalrous. No hacking them up for keys. No lopping the limbs off. Things like that. Last chances. What are you talking about? Chief. We're dead. They're dead. We're dead. So, see where I'm going? Eh, eh, eh. No, I don't actually. Chief, we already got an opening line with these limping ladies. We've all died at the last one, at least once. We've had something to talk about. They'll appreciate men with our kind of death experience. Wait. 
Did you say before them I'm not dead? Well, all right, you might not be dead, but I am. And from where I'm standing, I wouldn't mind staring, staring at a coffin with some of these fine, sinewy cadavers. I see here, Morte starts whacking his teeth, as if in anticipation. Of course, the caretakers would have to part with them first, and that's not likely. Where do these corpses come from? Death visits the plains every day, Chief. These shamblers are all that's left of the poor sods who sold their bodies to the caretakers after death. Alright. Look, Chief, it's obvious you're still a little addled after your kiss with death, so I got two bits of advice for you. One, if you got questions, ask me, alright? No, to speak with the party members, blah blah blah. Alright, five questions I'll ask you. Second, if you're half as forgetful as you seem to be, start writing stuff down. Whenever some, whenever you come across something that might be important, jot it down so you don't forget. If I had a journal, I suppose, I'd have it with me. Excuse me, I do that. Start with a new one, then, Chief. No loss. There's plenty of parchment and ink around here. The last you. Hmm. All right. But it hurt. I'll make a new one then. You need to keep track of your, our, your movements. If you start, if you ever start to get cloudy on important things like who you are, or more importantly, who I am, use it to refresh your memory. Access your journal. Blah blah blah. Right. Updated my journal. I'm gone. All right. So another thing is you want to check bloodstained rust remains. You want to check. bunch of this stuff to make sure you're not missing out on picking up anything ah common and we got a weapon this irons does two to four crushing damage this crude bars designs basically a fisticuff and this one's one to three piercing Oh, okay, they changed it. What's up? Yeah. Oh, what is this? This book is huge. It must contain thousands of names. Done. Books have been completely wrapped in bandages like a mummy. There's something over here. Oh, no, never mind. It's empty. This gate shield shut. Uh, there's no lock. Okay. Talk to him. Doll. The scribe looks very old. His skin is wrinkled and has a slight trace of yellow. The old... Like old parchment. Charcoal gray eyes lined with an angular face. A large white beard. Closed down in front of his robes like a waterfall. His breathing is ragged, regular, but even with his occasional coughing, does not slow down the scratching of his quills. Greetings. Whoa, chief, what are you doing? I was going to speak with a scribe. He might know something about how I got here. Look, rattling your bone box with Dusty's should be the last thing. Bone box is like slang for your mouth because your mouth is it, it's full of beef bones. Before Morte can finish his rant, the scribe begins coughing violently. After a moment or two, the coughing spells dies down, and the scribe's breathing resumes its ragged we. And we especially shouldn't be swapping the chance with sick dusties. Come on, let's leave. The quicker we give this place a laugh, the bet. Before Morte can finish, the scribe's gray eyes flicker to you. 
The weight of years hangs heavy upon you, restless one, places down the quill. But I do not, do not yet count deafness among my ailments. Restless one, you know me? I know you. I, there's a trace of bitterness in the scribe's voice as he speaks. I have never known you, restless one. No more than you have known yourself. He is silent for a moment. For you have forgotten, have you not? Who are you? As always, the question, the wrong question as always. He bows slightly, but the moment suddenly sends him into a bout of coughing. I, he pauses for a moment, catches breath. I am dull. Perhaps you can answer some questions Updated for me, my doll. Journal. Very well, what do you wish to know? You Updated know who I am. My journal. I, I know scant little of you, restless one. I know little more than those that have journeyed with you and who now lie in our keeping. He all sighs. I ask that you no longer ask others to join with you, restless one. Where you walk, silver mocks, walks misery. Let your brethren be your own. Let your burden be your own. There are others who have joined me. Where Updated are they? my journal. Do you not know the woman's corpse interred in the memory memorial hall below? I thought that had traveled with you in the past. Doll looks like he is about to start coughing again and then catches his breath. Am I mistaken? I know nothing about her. Doll makes no response to this. He simply stares at you in silence. Where can I find her? The Northwest Memorial Hall on the floor below us. Check the buyers there. Her name should be the one of the memorial plaques. Perhaps that will re revive your memory. I don't know. I don't ever recall traveling with a woman. That makes no response. Other questions? Um... What is this place? You are in the mortuary, restless one. Again, you have come before you can finish. Doll breaks into a fit of coughing. After a moment, he calms himself and his braving resumes. It's ragged wheeze. This is the waiting room for those about to depart the shadow of this life. Again, I've been here more than once. Yes, again. You have been brought here many times, Restless One. I had hoped this time would be your last, considering the wounds you had sustained. He sighs. When will you give up your passions and leave the shadow of this of life? Wounds. Yes, the wounds that decorate your body. They look as if they would have sent a lesser man among the path of the true death. Yet it seems as if many of them have healed already. They all coughs violently for a moment, then steadies himself. But those are only the surface wounds. Updated my journal. Only surface wounds? What do you mean? I speak of the wounds of the mind. You have forgotten much, have you not? Mayhap your true wound run deep, much deeper than the scars that decorate your surface. Doll coughs again. But then it's something that only you would certain. Tell me more about the mortuary. Shadow of life. Yes, a shadow, you see, restless one. This life it is not real. Your life, my life, they are shadows, flickering of what life once was. This life is where we end up after we die, and here we remain, trapped, aged, until we can achieve the true death. What makes you think this life isn't real? What makes you think this life is real? Look inside yourself. Do you f not feel something lacking? Doll shakes. This is a purgatory. There is only sorrow here, misery, torment. These are not the elements that make up life. They are part of the cage that traps us in this shadow. Hmm. He just how? I feel like the other two were kind of confronting. Doll shakes his head. Passions carry weight. 
They anchor many to the shadow of life. As long as one clings to emotions, they will be continually reborn into this life. Forever suffering, never knowing the purity of true death. I see, how does one escape the cycle of rebirth and achieve this true death? Fill your passion, strip yourself of the need of sensation. When you are truly cleansed, then the cycle of rebirth will end to achieve peace, doll sighs. It sounds like a death rattle in his throat. Past these shells of ours, past the eternal boundary, lies the peace that all souls seek. The eternal boundary. The boundary between the shadow life and death. Uh, tell me more about the mortuary. The gill. The gill is our fair city. Restless one. Mortuary. Other questions? Ah. What do you do here? I am a scribe, a, catalog a cataloger of all of the shells that come to the mortuary. Doll coughs again and takes a deep breath. As long as the stream of corpses flows through the mortuary, I shall remain at my post. You should have been here more than once. Desmond does not recognize me. Updated my journal. I am the one that catalogs the shells and comes to our halls, Restless One. Dahl breaks into a fit of coughing and then steadies himself. Only I see the faces of those that have eyed upon the tables of, the, of our slabs. The dark of your existence lies safe with me. The dark, the secret of your life. Other questions. You sound ill, are you not well? I am close now to the true death, breathless, restless one. I will not be long before I pass beyond the eternal boundary and find peace that I have been seeking. I tire of this mortal sphere, doll. The plains hold no more wonders for one such as I. Are you certain? There might be a way that I can help you. I do not wish to live forever, nor live again, restless ones. I could not bear it. Well, I think that's pretty much it. As you turn to leave, Dahl speaks. Know this. I do not envy you, restless one. To be reborn as you would be a curse that I could not bear. You must come to terms with it, at least at some point, your path will return you here, all coughs, the sound rattling in his throat, is the way of all thing flesh and bone, and perhaps we will meet again, doll. Alright, let's see. Ah. Did I grab this one? Uh, about this one? Nope, alright. Anything down in this corner? No. Alright. Oh. Is that a woman? See if we can. Oh man, there's nothing around here. Ivine. Ven? Vene? You see a slight young woman with pale features. The sunken flesh around her cheeks and neck makes her appear as if she is starving. She seems intent on dissecting the corpse in front of her, broadening the chest with her finger. Greetings. The woman does not respond. She seems too intent on the body in front of her. As you watch her work, you suddenly notice her hands. Her fingers are talons. They are darting in and out of the corpse's chest cavity like knives, removing organs. I 
I said greetings. The woman makes no response. I think the dusty chint might be in a bit of sort of hearing. If let's lay off, shall we? Let's tap her attention. The woman jumps, whips around to face you. Her eyes are rotting yellow with small orange dots for pupils. As she sees you, her expression changes from surprise to irritation. She frowns at you. Uh, greetings? She doesn't seem to have heard you. She leans forward, squinting as if she can't quite make you out. Whatever is wrong with her eyes must make her terribly nearsighted. You... She clacks her talon fingers together and makes a strange motion with her hands. Fine thread. Balming juice. Bring here. Even a... Go, 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 go. You've been assigned a quest. Updated my journal. Alright, so now we are to find thread and embalming fluid. Which hopefully there's some somewhere. Let's see. Nothing. What's that? Jar of embalming fluid. What does it say? Embalming fluid special. Oh, it's a healing potion. Uh, two to eight hit points and gives you plus one armor. Ah, because it's used on corpses, it's only usable by the nameless one and Morte. This is a sealed jar of embalming fluid. It is used as a preservative for dead bodies. As an added benefit, the smell of the fluid is more than sufficient to mask the smell of any rotting bodies it is used on. Effects are temporary. Alright, another. Locked. Hmm. Anything over here? Big hole in the center. It's shaped like a donut. Let's see. Can I break it? Forced it. Open. Cool. An earring and a bandage. What is the ancient earring? Ancient copper earring. Blows. This copper earring looks ancient. Oddly enough, that doesn't seem to be a hook or any means of actually attaching it to your ear. A series of strange grooves have been carved along the inside of the earring, however, which might merit a closer examination. If you ever you, uh, capable of examining an object further or form an action, use button will appear. So, let's open our inventory. Split that, because we're going to have to give one to the gal. Use. Ancient copper earring. This copper earring looks extremely old. It looks like it was meant to be worn. It doesn't seem to have be a hook or any means of actually attaching it to your ear. There seems to be a series of grooves. Oh, examine the grooves. The grooves are evenly spaced along the inside of the earring. Along closer examination, they remind you of small fangs. They are definitely man-made. You can't figure out what they're intended for. Put the earring away. Hmm. So. I'm gone. That sounds like something I can figure out later. Or hopefully ask someone to help figure out. Alright. But now we still need to find thread. We need a key. Failed. Hmm. This. Locked needs to have a key. Right, where does this go? Mortuary, third floor. Done. Oh. 
charcoal charm. What is this? Charcoal charm. Charcoal charm. Resistance to fire, magical resistance. So that's the other thing about this, is this game has a lot to do with superstitions. So let's end it here. If you guys like this and kind of like my style of narration, I know this is a little bit different than what I normally, the content that I normally put out, but this is a game that I absolutely love. Um, but yeah, let me know if you guys want a part two and this to become a series. So then, stay safe on the front line.